thank you dear for kind introduction and i would like to thanks at the outset uh, rutul and amit and the team psg for inviting me to deliver a talk on the important topic that is the lada in pregnancy can you see my slides yes sir yeah so to begin with uh, we are dealing with a case symposium uh, i will be dealing with the lada patient in pregnancy this is mrs abc in a 25 year old woman referred for newly diagnosed gestational diabetes after having a uh, oral gtt test her one hour postprandial glucose was 150 mg and she denied any history of polyuria polydipsia polyphagy or visual disturbances and she came to our clinic at 28 weeks of gestation during this pregnancy she had gained weight of only 5 pound by 31 weeks and denied any complications before the pregnancy <clears throat> sorry her baseline weight was 205 pound and her bmi was 33 so she is obese her medical history was significant for a single pregnancy 4 years ago that was not complicated by gdm but she delivered a healthy baby with normal spontaneous vaginal delivery she denied any subsequent history of impaired fasting glucose or ifg or igt she denied a family history of type 2 diabetes also however her four year old daughter got type 1 diabetes and she denied of any tobacco or alcohol use so this is a background this female coming to your clinic with the previous history of normal delivery and her uh, baby developed type 1 diabetes and the, in this pregnancy she is having igt and ifg so after being diagnosed with gdm she was started on appropriate dietary counseling and was uh, advised the home blood glucose monitoring but despite of this she was not well controlled and she was started on nph insulin 5 units before bed time she continued to monitor fasting and two hour glucose gradually and her nph dose was titrated to 14 units at bed time but despite of this her postprandial hyperglycemia was not controlled so insulin lispro was added as per the one unit per 20 g of carbohydrate she consumed her blood glucose control improved on intensive insulin therapy her hemoglobin hba1c was excellent at 5.5 with the start of the basal bolus therapy and at term she delivered a healthy boy with the normal delivery and the patient was scheduled for a postpartum ogtt after few weeks and she denied of any hyperglycemic symptoms and she had lost a total of 17 pounds since delivery and was close to her baseline weight of 207 pound <clears throat> her 75 g ogt was showing fasting blood glucose of 117 and two hour glucose of 179 and her a1c was 5.8 so she was having borderline raised when she was followed up in the first visit and her consistent igt was uh, and she was still nursing it was planned to return her after the 8 weeks she was called and then ogtt was again uh, done and she was having very high glucose levels of 200 and 350 fasting and postprandial for 3 days and she was having symptoms of polyuria polydipsia and blood vision so my dear friends what is this patient we have to dig up and see whether it is a type 2 patient or whether it is a lada so this patient was uh, insulin was initiated with basal insulin glargine 15 units at bed time and insulin lispro for bolus insulin coverage at major meals because of the family history of type 1 diabetes in her daughter and acute exacerbation of hyperglycemia postpartum an antibody test was done and <clears throat> her gad antibody was positive igg auto uh, antibody was positive islet cell and the non fasting c peptide level was borderline that is 794 picogram per liter so this patient is following in between type 1 and type 2 because the antibodies are positive and despite of the positivity of antibody the c peptide is uh, moderately uh, secreted so because of the presence of pancreatic antibodies she was diagnosed with lada that is latent autoimmune diabetes in adults the intensive insulin therapy that is basal bolus therapy was started within the next 6 months she was started on insulin pump because she was affording and had excellent glycemic control one year after her diagnosis she began again pregnant and she was well maintained on the basal bolus therapy or on the insulin pump which she continued so the message is that you don't go that every uh, gdm patient is type 2 you have to take proper history to proper pedigree charting and antibody testing should be done so what is lada how lada is diagnosed why it is important to recognize and diagnose lada 
this we will see in the few slides so lada is an adult onset diabetes with positive antibodies and slowly progressive beta cell failure lada does not present like type 1 diabetes with significant weight loss and ketoacidosis from progressive rapid beta cell failure because of the slow progression of beta cell failure lada uh, simulates type 2 diabetes initially but gradually the insulin levels goes down and the patient is adult onset with positive antibodies and lack of ketosis is the major three features of uh, lada at diagnosis c peptide levels in lada are at intermediate levels between type 1 and type 2 which uh, our patients was seen and positive antibodies are there but gradually the beta cell failure develops and patient start behaving like type 1 but the ketosis is rare initially uk pds have shown 10% of the newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes were found to have antibody positivity that is they were lada autoimmunity is a strong predictor of insulin requirement within 6 years in all age groups and the predictive value increases with decreasing age because of the earlier need for insulin therapy it is important to identify these patients with lada insulin therapy can be started in a timely manner once this condition is diagnosed so multiple studies have tried to best distinguish lada from type 2 diabetes and we know that the patients are not so obese they don't have ketosis and they may have some secreting of uh, insulin through the c peptide levels but the antibodies are positive so major features are uh, age at the diagnosis is less than 50 acute onset of symptoms personal history of autoimmune disease family history of autoimmune disease bmi is usually less than 25 are the major features of lada so family history of type 2 diabetes has not been shown to distinguish between lada and type 2 diabetes and should not be used to exclude lada so only family history is not a important factor patient with lada are more often unable to control their glucose levels through diet and lifestyle modification like the type 2 diabetic patients without autoimmunity moreover the failure rates of diet and lifestyle therapies are higher the younger the patients are in patients with lada sulfonylurea therapy is associated with more rapid beta cell failure than insulin therapy that's why we have to start insulin therapy early in that lada patients and metformin should be avoided to prevent ketoacidosis <clears throat> so the key message is that underlying process of the decline in the beta cell failure lada patient should be started on insulin early and in the pregnancy basal bolus therapy is giving the best results and we should prevent the misdiagnosis of lada or 1.5 diabetes which is a in between of type 2 and type 1 diabetes that's why it is also known as 1.5 diabetes and you should be uh, vigilant because 10% of the patients of the type 2 diabetes which are diagnosed can be lada so during pregnancy also you should be vigilant and usually we should start with basal bolus therapy for best control so the clinical pulse lada occurs in 10% of adults who appear to present with type 2 diabetes the clinical <coughs> presentation is like type 2 but the antibody positivity low bmi and absence of ketosis is there within a few years they require the insulin therapy patients with lada require preventive screening assessment for micro and macrovascular complications also and gdm during gdm also lada patient can be picked up so don't miss them and for proper uh, delivery of the uh, well uh, controlled sugar should be done in the patients with lada also we have the healthy mother and baby thank you thanks a lot for patient here thank you